Uh, so we have just heard about a number of, uh, I guess, disruptive themes, um, and that is uh, in many ways the, uh, the theme of today's conference, uh, finding order in the new disorder. I'll just pick up this clicker and figure out how it works. Here we go. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, the ETF market and in particular strate strategic beta. Um, and certainly both the ETF market and strategic beta are, uh, they're in my, in my opinion, um, a source of disruption. Um, they are, they, I guess they're bringing uh, both order and disorder to the industry. Uh, so this slide here essentially shows the growth of the Australian ETF market over time. You can see rapid growth. The line is the number of products up to more than 150. The, the orange bars is the, the assets under management. Um, so that's, uh, that's a, above $27 billion. It's been growing at you know, almost 50% per annum for the last few years. Um, and that is, that's essentially bringing, that's one of the sources of disorder for the, the traditional mutual fund industry. Um, because in traditional mutual funds, inflows have been you know, tepid at times, whereas the ETF industry is growing rapidly. In, in many ways, I think uh, the, the, ETF, uh, the ETF space is, is a bit like you know, your Ubers and Airbnbs in that it's a technology solution that is uh, disrupting uh, an, existing, um, an existing suite of products um, and investors seem to be gravitating towards that. There are regulatory trends behind it, uh, th things like uh, transparency, the, the trend towards low costs. And also just um, investors just seem to want to get everything in one place if they can. Um, you know, Australia was, uh, I, I believe it had one of the highest rates of piracy of Game of Thrones. Um, certainly I don't uh, condone piracy, but I think one of the reasons p possibly for that was, you know, people just um, not signing up to multiple different uh, TV, uh, TV streaming services. So they just went for the easiest option. And I think with, with ETFs, um, you know, th that, is, that is part of it. Increasingly, investors are able to, to kind of get everything in one place, whether it be uh, index ETFs, active ETFs or ETPs, and strategic beta. So I just want to delve into these numbers a little bit more. Um, so that's the same FUM numbers from the previous slide, uh, essentially showing uh, that, yes, the, the traditional ETP market is, is growing strongly. But a big chunk of the more recent growth is coming from newer styles of products, active ETPs in red, uh, strategic beta, and then there's also this kind of what I've termed other non-traditional, which includes things like commodity ETPs and also some products that are close to strategic beta but maybe don't quite meet the definition because they, you know, for whatever reason, they don't track an index even though they may offer some, some factor exposure. So, ETFs are one of the fastest growing parts of the industry and strategic beta is one of the fastest growing parts of the ETF market. Um, so that's, that's certainly one of the reasons we want to focus on, on this area of the market today. Um, so I've just got this slide up here. I, I won't kind of dwell on it. It's more um, something that I've borrowed from our US colleagues. Uh, my point here is that uh, it, strategic beta is not necessarily something radically new. Uh, it's kind of reinventing things that we, we've, we've had for a while. Uh, in fact, you know, Morningstar uses the term strategic beta, but there's other terms like smart beta that uh, we tend to avoid that because we don't necessarily think all the products are smart. But uh, even the ones that are smart can be, can be misused. So we sort of use the, the term strategic beta. Uh, but it's been around for decades. Um, Bar Rosenberg called it bionic beta in the 1970s. Uh, but what is new is that technology is allowing it to be offered for a cheaper price and also offered to, to retail investors. So that's, um, that's, that's quite a breakthrough and it, it is shaking things up. Just to make sure everyone's uh, clear what I'm talking about when I say strategic beta. So the difference, it, it, strategic beta essentially lies somewhere between active and market cap indexing. So it's, um, 
It tracks an index, but not necessarily, or not a market cap weighted index, um, but, but neither is it active because, you know, it has to buy the stocks that are in that, are in that index. So this slide kind of lays out uh, what, what Morningstar defines as a strategic beta. Um, and so how do we make sense of this, this fast growing space that, you know, that it's rapidly evolving. There's a lot of new products launching. One of the things we've done uh, is to publish a, a global strategic beta landscape report for the, we've been publishing that every year since 2014. And it looks at every individual country, looks at some of the trends in strategic beta in that market. Um, and certainly it's the case, what we've seen for the last few years, it's not just an Australian phenomenon, it's not just a US phenomenon, it, it is global. Um, maybe not the case in every country, we can see you know, China's strategic beta products have shrunk a bit, but generally on the whole it's, it's been a rapid um, increase. This, this chart here shows the Asia Pacific markets and we delve into each of those in detail in our, um, in our strategic beta landscape report. Um, Japan, there's probably the obvious thing that um, jumps out at you as seeing quite incredible growth. That's, the, um, that's basically the Bank of Japan um, and their QE program. Um, they've, uh, they've been buying about $60 billion worth of, um, of ETFs, including strategic beta products for the last few years. And also some of the Japanese pension funds have added strategic beta products to their, uh, to their investment mix. Um, but what about, uh, what, have, uh, what have consumers been buying? Well, so far in, um, in Australia, if you look in the Australia column there, you can see that uh, essentially consumers have been pr predominantly using dividend weighted products, products focused on the, the dividend factor. Partly that's a, uh, just a, a case of what the product set has, that has been available. Most of the strategic beta vehicles in Australia have been uh, dividend weighted products. Uh, certainly that's changed a lot in the last couple of years. Uh, and also I think, you know, there probably has been a little bit of um, either performance predicting or perhaps performance chasing there uh, with dividend stocks having performed so well. Uh, I'm not sure which of you in the room may have predicted that and which of you were chasing that. Um, but yeah, that, that'll be interesting to see if, if dividend stocks um, kind of hand over their um, market leadership to, to other sectors, um, whether that prompts uh, flows going into these other types of strategic beta products, whether they be momentum or quality, um, equal weighted um, factor products. Um, let's just take a look at the next slide. This is the, again, the overall thumb of the ETF market. The orange is the, the strategic beta. It, Kind of looks small on this chart, but if you actually annualise the numbers, it's, it's growing pretty fast. And all, the, all those black dots are product launches. Um, and essentially on the left-hand side of the chart, most of those launches are dividend products. But towards the right-hand side of the chart, you have a lot more uh, different types of products. Again, the you know, quality products, equal weight. Um, yeah, a, a whole different range of, of factor products, even, even some multi-factor um, ETFs that offer a exposure to m uh, multiple factors. So what is more, um, another one of the things that Morningstar is doing to kind of make sense of this increasingly diverse area uh, is we've introduced um, a, a taxonomy of strategic beta. So this is a, uh, a searchable data point in our products uh, and you can sort ETFs according to um, this taxonomy. So at the high level, you can sort based on whether a product is strategic beta or not. Uh, then underneath that, you can sort by the, the, the type of product that it is, whether the factor is risk oriented, return oriented, or uh, what we've termed other, which is um, a, a bit of a catch-all of other things that, that don't fit in uh, to either of the first two groups. Um, so an example of return-oriented factors would be value, growth, um, fundamental indexing, um, that you know, the uh, real index and, and RAFI uh, use, um, and then a, a risk-oriented um, factor would be mi uh, minimum volatility. 
So this is just one of the ways that we're, um, we're trying to introduce um, ability to kind of scan uh, this fast growing area and make sense of it. Um, and the other way is, is just uh, the, the, the research papers that I've mentioned. So Chris mentioned the ETF investor. Um, this is our, our global guide to str strategic beta. The next edition is due in Q3, but you can already check out um, previous editions um, on at Morningstar Advisor Research Centre. So thank you very much, and I'm going to hand over to Chris and the other the panel members. Thank, thank you, Alex. Thank you so much. For